Well, welcome back. We've done the Devil's Marbles. Tick. That's as far north as we were going. So we've turned around and started making our way back. Um, couldn't go past staying back here at Tea Tree. Great little donation camp, great store with uh, some good produce that you can go and support them with. And uh, so we'll do a night here and then I'm going to take you to a, it was going to be a little secret but I had to let the cat out of the bag. So we're going down to a little fossicking area, gem tree, um, I believe. So stay tuned. I don't know how to, uh, how it's going to go road wise. Um, I've got, I had two people say there's no problems, it's sealed. So fingers crossed it is. And uh, we've got two nights there. We've got to take it nice and slowly because it's, it's damn cold down south. And uh, we're enjoying this beautiful uh, Northern Territory, uh, what would you call it? It's, it's the winterless north, isn't it? <laughs> Well, howdy everyone. It's been a busy day. We drove from Tea Tree down to the Gem Tree Caravan Park. What a spot. Um, it's kind of like, well, paying for a free spot, but having your power and your water like right there as well. So, you know, you're, you're at it like this big, it's a bit of a dusty old paddock, but it's, uh, look at that splattered around you've got some powered sites you get some unpowered sites you've got um area where you can have your um little cooker um a fireplace there's a couple of fires you can see burning there um really didn't get up to too much after getting here it was just a big operation cleanup because we had power and water we we're able to get into the van and uh, give it a really good thorough clean um, we've had what 10 12 days on the road and uh, it's been pretty dusty and dirty so uh, Jude was like right time to do some washing and cleaning so tomorrow hopefully we'll get into uh, a little bit of uh, around the camp um, don't know whether we'll do any fossicking um, we might uh, yeah check out the history and things um, we're going to go and walk through to the um, the, the big camp oven area where um, we've got dinner booked for tonight so really looking forward to a nice camp oven dinner so yeah here we are gem tree i think it's about let's say about 140 150 k's north um, you travel um, 70 k's off the stewart highway to get here so uh, the road was a little bit um, it wasn't too bad it's one of those um, single lane tar sealed and dive off to either side of the road when cars are coming so um, it was a pretty good road, 70 k's, just yeah, keep your attention span. <laughs> anyway, we'll go and explore a bit more of obviously our camp oven festival um, uh, tonight for tea. And then tomorrow um, we'll uh, have a little walk around and see what makes Gem Tree tick. How good's that? Smells delicious. I'm glad. I get immune to it over the day. Beautiful. There you go. Thank you, sir. Lovely. Thank you. Yep, definitely. Thank you. All growing in your own garden. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. Looks beautiful. Show for the gravy. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I have everything. Thank you. And a bit more. Very good. Talk about service, eh? <laughs> it's lovely. There you go, guys. Thank you. So here we are, a nice cosy evening in Gem Tree. Um, it's a uh, was a camp oven uh, meal tonight. It's only yep. 35 bucks each, which we reckon is good value. So we pop down here. They've got a beautifully lit, um, what do you call them, fairy lit garden. Yep. Fires going. So uh, really looking forward to a nice little evening there. Yep. Cheers. All right, so one of the features out here at Gem Tree is this pine wood cabin, the Mount Riddick Homestead. It wasn't um, 
built here. It was uh, up in Mount Riddick and uh, the gem tree uh, people here are now custodians of looking after it but uh, I think it was a two bedroom, it's actually quite roomy. But there's some terrific history about the a lot of the owners around all these uh, all these little stations you see down in here. Mount Riddick was this one here. Okay, so the Riddick Homestead, Benjamin Webb, who married Jane White, came out this neck of the woods and they built their first homestead on the foothills of the Hearts Ranges on Rambalana in the 1920s. They moved to Gumwell, now known as Mount Riddick, in 1928-1930, a more substantial homestead. And then, uh, yeah. Some pretty interesting ones. Now, one thing I have found out super interesting in our travels. Oh, before we go there, check out the hack marks on all the timbers there, being done with uh, the axe. You can see how cut up they are. Pretty incredible. So, one super interesting find I found here was this Alcuta station. And there it is there across the road from Gem Tree where we are now. Now Akuta was where the fossils were found when we were in um, Alice Springs, the megafauna fossils. So now I can put two and two together. Pretty cool. And uh, yeah, not to mention the, uh, the gold, the mica, There's so many uh, gems found in this neck of the woods. When it comes down here, such gemstones found in the heart range area, because zircons, garnets, quartz, burial, aquamamine, citrine, siphene, oh yeah, she's a very rich field. Well, we were all gearing up for a walk on the, uh, the gem fields little forest trail, but things changed from going for a walk to uh, doing a bucket of gemstones so uh, no, gemstones yet. no no gemstones yet she says so uh, we have got a bucket oh, no no bucket there yet no oh, is he still coming with it oh well so much for that I've got myself too too excited And what they use mica for? Mica, that come in the old days. You know, you remember the old flip top toasters? The ones that separate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They flip it on, on each like side. That. Yeah. yeah. Well, inside, about that wide yeah. and about that high, is mica. Mica. That With the elements little, wrapped around. The little elements wrapped around. So it's very what? Because it's heat resistance. resistance. The mine up here was mined and started mining in the Second World War. It's got to be over three. 2.3. So, eat, now good for a cutter. So, you out of that basket, you've got two cutters. Just those two? Yep, just those two. Yeah, hey folks, welcome back. Well, where were we? We were in Gem Tree not long ago, and it wasn't far. It was um, it was about 70 k's back out to the Stewart Highway, and about uh, about 20 or 30 odd k's back towards Alice to uh, one of our favourite spots. Um, it was called uh, well, it was Hemi's Camp. It's back to Bert's Camp. But Bert's Camp, look at it, wide open space, awesome. Oh, <laughs> haven't seen that little baby. It's been tucked away for 20,000 kilometers and I finally decided to get it out to use it. We, um, we're not gonna be getting into Alice for uh, three days. So um, it's good to uh, be parked in a spot like this where you can pop that out and uh, not have to worry about packing it up every day. So, um, and uh, given the conditions, 
a little bit of rain around. So um, this is just the start of it. The next two days could be rather challenging. So uh, one for Cook and Solar and two to try and get out of this place if it turns to bog. <laughs> but hopefully it doesn't. So um, yeah, we're at Bird's Camp. Um, Jude's thrown on a beautiful, um, it started off as a steak and kidney. Still steak and kidney, but then she's kind of like turned it into a bit of a stew. So she's thrown some extra um, uh, potato, some onion, some carrot, and some garlic. And yeah, it's smell oh, red wine. <laughs> she had a bit of red wine that she didn't like, so that's gone into the old, I call it a pig, it is a pig. Um, a fantastic little invention. I mean, yeah, probably a little bit more weight than we should be carting around with this thing. It, we could have done it a lot lighter. There is a travel pig available, which is a lot lighter, but uh, that wasn't available when we bought this baby, and uh, we love it so much. And especially in conditions like this, it's it's just starting to rain. We're not sort of like worried about, oh, the fire's going to go out because it's going to get covered with, uh, excuse me for batting the flies. It's going to get wet, you know, where it's kind of self-contained. We don't have to worry about flares and sparks and things because we've got the uh, spark arrestor on it. And, um, and it's very economical on wood too. So a great little invention thanks to the, uh, the man that invented the Ozpig. He did a good job. So here we go. I will try and show you what is cooking. So here is the pig. As you can see, burning quite nicely. Got some beautiful coals sitting down here, simmering away. Kettle on the side that is just simmering nicely for some dishes. And if I grab my trusty little in here, there it is. It's kind of like a steak and kidney stew, and it smells and I have had a wee sample. It tastes delicious. So yep, she's doing the job nicely. Thank you, Mr. Pig. Well, I thought I'd just make this video just to show that it's not always sunshine, sunsets, sunrises and roses. <laughs> we do get the wet days. This one we were lucky enough to uh, call uh, Discovery uh, office there and uh, ask whether we could extend our stay. One, to let this bad weather pass and two, to let it dry out a little bit. So fortunately, we've been able to make ourselves a little bit more comfortable. And uh, as you can see by a few of the old puddles on the road here, um, we've had a good, good amount of rain. Yeah, everybody here in Alice has got to be pretty happy. Gets the old fire risk down. You can see all the, uh, the cloud and the mist all over the hills there. So, um, yeah, it just gives us an excuse to see a little bit more about Alice. <laughs> but yeah, just wanted to make uh, that uh, point out that uh, a lot of the parks here, they, they bend over backwards sometimes to try and help you out. So I uh, appreciate that. Um, Alice Springs Discovery Park here. Well, how things change. It's actually been about five or six days since our last contact, mainly because we were heading back from the Devil's Marbles. Coming back down to a couple of little spots that we didn't see on the way. Excuse me why I try to negotiate a very muddy road. Yes, that's what it's been. How things change. So we're here at Stewart's Well. Trust me, you don't need to dig for water at Stewart's Well at the moment because it's laying all over the ground. But a great little um, park up spot out the back. And um, some uh, ostriches over here in the corner uh, there's a little barbecue area for the caravanners over there oh i'm trying to see where i'm going no i'm not seeing where i'm going i'm getting lost but i'll do a little spin around it's obviously a little area there that you can um we can go into the free camp area and then behind me over here is the uh the paid camp area which you've got power and water over there so free camp over here, but obviously we're going to go over and uh, patronise the uh, the publican over there. Grab a burger and chippies or something. And there's the uh, little pond behind us. So yeah, it's been wet and gloomy. Um, 
We wanted to do a little bit more in Alice on the way back, but you won't believe it. And this is a warning out to people. Yes, Jude was uh, in the uh, the bathroom there, and she slipped on the tiles. Not a lot, just a little look like that, and um, she strained a muscle in her back. So uh, she was pretty laid up for at least three days. So. Uh, Sadly, we didn't get everything else ticked off that we wanted in Alice. And then of course the weather just compounded it as well. So it's just kind of like, well, dude, could have gone out, but then being on wet tiles, uh, walking around towns and, and places like that, it wasn't, it wasn't the place to be. So we sat it out, hoped that we'd get some sunshine. But as you can see, we're about 100 k's, about 80 something k's from Alice, and it is still yuck. So. Uh, we elected to stay at a free camp like this mainly because the base was a little bit better than trying to just dive off the road somewhere into the unknown and uh, getting stuck. So we stay here, we'll see what tomorrow brings and um, we'll probably, as we head our way down south, look a lot, look at a lot of the um, tarmac rest stops as we go rather than the, the little bush bashes. <laughs> Right, we're up and going. We left the Stuart Well Roadhouse. Not a bad little spot. Um, as I said, it was bloody good tucker. And um, if it wasn't dry July, I would have been having a beer or two, but uh, looking after myself this month. Jude as well, good honor. Anyway, on the way up, we came past this site here. Now, unbeknown to me, Australia had, I think they had a few actually, but this one here was the inaugural um, Cannonball Run back in 1994. It was run from um, Darwin down here past Alice and then back up. It was a total of about 3,200 kilometers. Sadly, on the way down, um, a Japanese driver, I believe, was uh, coming around, he was hooning down the straight, coming around this corner, and I believe this road was recently sealed and uh, he, he was passing car and probably got a little bit wide, got onto the loose gravel, lost control. And uh, sorry for the noise of the vehicles going by. But um, yeah, he lost, he lost control and um, slid into, I believe, I think it was two official vehicles that were on the side of the road here uh, monitoring the situation. And sadly, um, two of the, uh, the officials, that would have been old, uh, Keith Allen Pritchard here and uh, Timothy Linklater, lost their lives along with the two in the, uh, I think it was a Ferrari F40. So uh, that was, uh, now I'm not going to say that, Akiro Kahabi and uh, Tashiki uh, Konano. And uh, that was back in, um, that was back in, the 24th of May 1994 so um, it was run out here because unbeknown to me as well um, back then there was no official speed limit for um, the Northern Territory for this stretch of road so it was um, a perfect um, uh, area to uh, not really race it was it's a staged event so uh, but yeah sadly got out of control and I don't believe there's been another one since so uh, Yes, a bit of a sad little ending to the uh, cannibal run here in Australia. Anyway, we're moving on down. We're gonna go try and the, uh, the border. Um, on our way up, it looked like a pretty good spot, especially with the, uh, the seal, a bit of hard there. So uh, as you can see by the, uh, the van and the uh, water spots around, even this is a, a turn off bay and it's looking a little bit like a, a mud bog. So let alone um, going off into some bush camp, it could be a bit risky, so taking it easy here. Well here we are, about to cross the border, back into South Australia. And what do you know, we've had four or five days of rain through Alice and uh, even this morning. And we get to here right on the border and uh, 
she's opening up. It's looking quite good. Um, I love Northern Territory. It's been great. It's a good spot. We've had the Uluru's, we've had the Olgas, we've had the Kings Canyons. Just completely blew us away. Then we made it to the Fink races at uh, Alice Springs and that was fantastic along with all the things to do in Alice. And then we've moved on up through to um, oh, wonderful spots all the way up there. The uh, Barrow Creek, the tea, tea trees, the uh, Devil's Marbles Hotel, the Devil's Marbles himself and been fantastic. We've just missed a 100k stretch between the Devil's Marbles and Three Way or Tenant Creek. So we'll have to do that another time. Anyway, uh, so we, then we turned around, we started to come back again, and uh, we ended up spending the, the three, uh, four, five nights at um, Alice, uh, mainly for weather, and Jude uh, doing a little uh, muscle damage to her back. But she's, she's fighting fit, she's doing very, very well. We made our way back down. Oh, just to touch on Alice. Um, we were there for nearly a total of 10 days, and a fantastic little place. Um, yes, there is a little bit of uh, a crime about, and you do have to be careful, but um, we saw nothing. I mean, we, we had our vehicle secure, we stayed in secure facilities like um, the Discovery Holly, Holiday Park was grand. Um, walking around town, no, no threats. We felt very, very safe around town. Um, but yeah, just wonderful bunch of people there and things. Um, and it was Krakenite as well, so everybody was pretty well behaved around Krakenite around there that I know of. <laughs> but um, yeah, would highly recommend, don't, don't have too much fear, as long as you, uh, don't go walking out at midnight and don't go leaving stuff all laying around the place, you could be asking for it, but uh, to secure yourselves up and um, do everything during the day and um, yeah, no problems. So, um, yeah, so here we are at the South Australia border. We're going to stay here the night. There's actually six parks out here on the on the seal, which will be good. Saves us from any dirt um, boggings and a um, few people around, which is nice as well. As you can see, a very, very busy spot. I better get going. That's my cue. Remember, follow us on Sweet As RVing. Click that like, subscribe button, and we'll bring some more content to you. And uh, the YouTube channel look after us as well. Later. Alrighty, we're back in South Australia. What a journey. Um, sun is kind of trying to sh shine. There, there is uh, a few little patchy bits of cloud about, but it's the most blue sky we've seen for a while. Thank you very much, South Australia. And uh, looking back there, it's much the same back in uh, Northern Territory as well. A uh, little windy, a little cooler. In fact, actually, it was that cool on the uh, right on the border there. We had frost on the roof of our um, van this morning. And uh, yeah, it was frightfully cool. Still got the flanny on. Um, so we're down at a place called Takunini, I think it is. Might be pronounced wrong, but uh, Jude might put it there somewhere. It's a little rest area. Um, you mightn't think that there's much here. Well, there isn't really. It's a great gravel pit. Thank you. Thank you for gravel pits. These gravel pits um, are fantastic. They, we know when we get in here with our van that we've got a pretty damn good chance of getting in and getting out good firm surface and even when you're here getting in and out of the van you're not trunching um, mud and dirt and stuff it's just gravel it's nice it's lovely good drainage not too many ants about it's always kept nice and clean which is great thank you to travelers or um, whoever scrapes it all up and there's some rubbish bins over here there is people are using them but yeah great little spot um, what was it Takunini um, there's a creek called that that runs through here and believe it or not, it comes from further up in the hills here, some way. Um, I think it was called like a marble hill or something like that. And that origination too isn't too far from a television program that I watch a lot, which is um, Opal Hunters. There's a place about 57 k's from that stream, and I think that's called Minterby. 
and it was one of the rarest opals you can get. I mean, you can look it all up, meant to be opal hunters, that sort of stuff. But it kind of was like, hoo hoo, not too far from there. Not gonna go and see it though. Um, uh, the train goes past here too. So obviously the Garn, uh, we just saw a freight train go by too. So, uh, oh, and the flies are all around. And what else is there? Um, I believe there's an airstrip not too far, probably only um, for the station um, and emergency supplies and that sort of stuff, but, and it's gonna be a bush airstrip at that for sure. But, um, and it's about 60 odd kilometers from, um, um, <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> Marla, it's about 60 odd kilometers from Marla. I nearly forgot it. Um, so yeah, it's a good chance here. We've got uh, Starlink absolutely pumping through. Good, Jude's um, on the desktop there uh, doing some um, catch up of work and doing a little bit more for our YouTube channel. And uh, we're getting some small solar in. So yeah, great little place. So just sort of give you a little update of where we are. Having fun. It's a good little spot. This would be a nice spot for tonight. And there's plenty of room out here too. So uh, as I said, I'll just do a little spin around. We've got a... Uh, a van just doing a patrol here, look at maybe coming in. But uh, look at it, great big wide open space. Sun is shining, and I'm gonna sit on my deck chair around the corner. I've, I've been drying out the awning and that sort of stuff, so yeah. <sighs> sit around on the deck chair and uh, relax while Drew's doing all the hard work. I'm done. <laughs> Remember, push that uh, like and subscribe and the follow button, please. Be my birthday, but I just want to celebrate. Oh.